I'm back. So we're having a little technical issues, of course. You know, IG Live. So we're going to, uh, he's going to come back on right now. So uh, we're here to talk, he's going to talk about um, just some financial situations going on with people in our industry, how to navigate it. So that's really what's the point of this call or this talk. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Behan is coming, uh, joining us right now, DJ Brian Henry. It is called him Behan. Hey Cliff. Hopefully, hopefully that's a little better. I think it's better. Turn turn the Wi-Fi off. That's what you gotta do. Turn the Wi-Fi off and reset. Just use your your phone. Uh, no, I heard you. I heard you beforehand. Call me B. Hen. Listen, I, I don't expect that name to kind of dissipate. And I know at the end of the day, it's all love. So don't even trip. I'm not tripping. First of all, so, <laughs> so <laughs> um, okay. So um, your first couple of years in LA, I started coming to LA maybe around that same time. Uh -huh. You tell me. You tell me very. Um, let's say confidently is the right word that you want to be a DJ. You're going to be a DJ, kind of in my face. And um, I remember it vividly. And, you know, people tell me stuff all night long, five days a week, seven days a week. And I remember that exact moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, what was your, you became a DJ. What was your first DJ job? First gig? Ooh, man, I DJed a 50th birthday party at the O Hotel. And I never forget, one of the guys from City High was there that night. And he came up to me. He said, man, you suck. How did you get hired for this gig? Who found you? Don't ever DJ again in your life. And I'm like, damn, that bad? Oh, <laughs> and at really? the time, he probably was right. You know what I mean? It was definitely that my is, first time. Well, first of, all, that's, first of all, that's not good to say. I mean, like, that's, like, that's not good for no, no one should be saying that. No one should tell someone that. They can think yeah, I agree. Right. You know, but we see where his career is now anyway, so it's all good. <laughs> no, man. no, but I mean, um, with, that, with that being said, like, you know, I, that left an impression on me to, you know, to figure out how to really go about this. At that point, I was only just like looking at YouTube videos. And, that, and I, at, at the time I was practicing Buddhism and, uh, you know, really, really focusing on uh, uplifting my chi, really focusing on enlightenment, enlightening myself through this yeah. practice. And uh, while practicing at the, at the Buddhist Center here in Los Angeles, I met Herbie Hancock, who was world renowned musician. And I got the opportunity to talk to him. I said, you know, during your generation, like how did you, transition from you know transition into this amazing musician he said let me tell you something son no matter who you are if you're serious about your craft anyone from quincy jones to beyonce they all take lessons and on that day i walked away from the center and i uh, went and enrolled at scratch dj academy here in west los angeles there's also campuses across the country and i started dj school and at the time i also you know i was in a crossroads i was in mba prep program at ucla i was about to go to business school and so I realized, like, you know, I can go to business school, but let me do this. Let me jump into something that I've been putting off and casting away for my entire life. Let me do it for a year. If it works, great. If not, I'll have an amazing admission story when it comes down to going to Harvard Business School or NYU. And like I said uh, earlier, it's now been 10 years. And so that business school plan, we didn't even need it. And what was kind of um, the first DJing job where you're like, okay, this is cool. I got this. You mean, what was your next DJ gig? Well, I mean, I had a few gigs lead up to that, but I think the first one that I felt most proud of and I realized, like, oh, I got this, uh, was Hill Harper and Nate Parker's annual uh, holiday tour drive. And we, at that, at, at that particular point, uh, we had it on top of the W Hotel on Hollywood Boulevard and just bodied it, just bodied it. One of those things we were talking about for weeks on end. And that's where I realized, okay, I got something going here. You know what I mean? Because DJ School and will teach you how the, the techniques of turntablism and it will teach you how to prepare yourself and no, no matter the environment you go on, but it will not teach you how to get a gig and it won't teach you how to rock the party. You have to learn that by trial and error. You're right, uh, through experience. And then what was the moment where you're like, I have made it, like I'm, I'm, I, I'm a DJ, I'm a successful DJ. Like was that one moment you're like, wow, you know, you kind uh, of like got over the hump of like, you know, I've been coming. Uh, somewhere between being booked on those final days of 106 in Park and Good Morning America. Good Morning America is one of those things that I prayed about and I wanted and just got to call one day like, hey, what do you think about this? And it, and it was dope because I had seen Kiss and MOS and D-Nice, you, know, you know, and Rashida at that point. I, I would see them at home on Friday mornings. Like, I was like, damn, I want to do that. And the opportunity came about. Much, shout, much love to Eric Jones over at ABC. 
And, you know, when you manifest something that you desire so, so passionately, that's, it was like, okay, I got this. I'm, 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 on, I'm on a good path right now. I do love Eric as well. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then what's been the highlight of your career so far? Without a doubt. You know the answer to that already. <laughs> I do, but you haven't said it yet. Hello, you haven't mentioned I'm like waiting for, I'm like, what? You no, say it. without a doubt, there's another thing that I, I, I don't, I've never, I don't know, I tell the story, but I tell the different versions of it and don't ever fully tell the full story. But, you know, without a doubt, the thing that I'm to this day most proud of is to be able to play for our forever president and forever first lady, President Barack Obama and uh, Ms. Michelle Obama, first lady Michelle Obama. Like, uh, you were there, you were there that weekend, not at the event, but up in the vineyard. You know, and what led to that event, I actually got called upon to DJ a wedding. Uh, that, that Morehouse Spellman connection is, is strong. The young lady who was getting married was, was her uh, first lady, Michelle Obama's assistant, and she graduated from Spellman. And I was DJing a number of homecoming parties. So when she was looking for someone to DJ her event, uh, naturally she looked to the guys who threw the party and they're like, oh, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta talk to B. Hen. And, that, and George Peters is actually who recommended me for the wedding. And, you know, we love George, we love jo Jovian. We love, jo yeah, we love George. <laughs> and, and, and of course I'm just nervous. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous as all hell leading up to that opportunity. You know, Secret Service is like on, on 10. And I was more nervous about that opportunity because the wedding was on the Saturday and the election that elected Trump was on Tuesday. Literally, Trump had been got into office on Tuesday, and then I had, and I was uh, DJing this wedding on Saturday. And so my thought process: this is the first time that many members in his cabinet, as well as the staff and, and, and team, will have access to any type of light, any type of love, any type of anything. Because those days after Trump got elected was depressing as hell, you know. And so meeting Mrs. Obama is like meeting your auntie who knew you before you knew yourself. <laughs> She's, you know, and I, at, we had the opportunity to fellowship with her prior to the the event starting. Myself, Eric Benet, Let Us See, uh, Dougie Fresh, and uh, Kenny Lattimore all performed at the wedding. And I asked her, you know, after we, you know, we talk, we all had small talk, and I asked her, you know, is there any special thing that you want to hear? And she's like, listen, I heard about you, so I know we're in good hands. I'm like, what? You know? And so I thought, you know, the wedding went off. Ama it was an amazing experience. And I thought that, hey, this is, I did it. I got, you know, I prayed to DJ for the president and this is as close as I'm ever gonna get. I'm so thankful. Only to realize that that experience had resonated so deeply that they had told uh, President Obama and then he, he, he requested me to come to Martha's Vineyard uh, the following summer to play for them at a private event. And it's something that, you know, it's just a dream, not only as a DJ, but just anyone in any profession to be called on by the president to play uh, or to provide the gift and the light that you have within you to 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 be of service in that capacity is just amazing, you know. So by you far, know, the highlight not, of my career. It's not just the president; it's like the president. You see what I'm saying? It's, you know, it, you know, it's like happened to be the most uh, the president we've all looked up to most in our entire life, and will be in our entire life. So you know, to be and it, you know, it's a really amazing um, story you've told me before. And you were doing, yeah, we were in Martha's Vineyard, and you were going like the next day to do it, which. D Nice does the same thing. I'm like, you know, I've never met the Obamas, mm -hmm. and I've said this many times. This is exactly how it's going to go down. I'm putting it out there. I put it out there a million times, but I've never met them. And you know, a lot of people I'm close to know them. You know I mean mm -hmm. Janelle Monet performed there? I think maybe ten or fifteen. So she's the, most, the artist that performed there the most when they were in office was her. Really? And, you know, like I said, take your you know mama the first time. Take your you know. Angie the second time, your cousin the fourth time, you know, your best friend from high school the sixth time, eighth, ninth time, you know, I'm like, I'll call so, you up and say, hey, Damo, come on, come over to the party. I mean, then I said, then I said, you know what? I'm good. I don't need any of y'all. Yo, one moment, we're going to be at some social engagement. I'm going to meet Michelle. Michelle's going to say, what do you do? I'm going to tell her. Then, you know, she's going to have someone get my contact information about four months later, I'm going to get a text saying, Hubby and I want to come out tonight. Where should we go? And the rest is going to be history. I'm telling I'm you right now. I'm, I'm okay? all about manifestation. I'm all about speaking what you want and your heart's desires into, into you know, it's going to happen. So there you go. You already put it out there. Michelle Obama is the one person that's the, my friend in my head, for sure. You mean? so? I mean, she, she the family is completely yeah, no, amazing. I'm overwhelmingly no. and perpetually thankful for that experience, you know? Everybody, you know, I know lots of people that know them well, and nobody, everybody has the exact, I get a very clear sense of who they are, you know, so anyway. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I want to talk about your uh, breast cancer event you do every year before oh. we go to the, yeah. 
Sure, absolutely. Uh, I'm the founder of Beats to Beat Breast Cancer. Uh, we've been operating since 2014. Uh, obviously, as a professional DJ, Beats to Beat Breast Cancer is a play on words. I encourage people, no matter your walk of life, uh, whether you're a veterinarian, a doctor, an entertainer, any type of artist, you know, use, we all march to the beat of our respective drums. And so during the month of October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we, we encourage everyone to use your respective beat to help raise funds for breast cancer prevention, particularly for African-American women. Uh, this is a cause that's near and dear to me because I've lost my mother, Tracy, and I've lost my mother, um, my godmother, Linda, both to breast cancer, both to metastatic breast cancer. What that means is that it starts off as breast cancer, and even through the mastectomy process where you remove your breasts, it's already in your lymph nodes, and it's spread across their entire body, and they, they ultimately that's how both my mom and my godmother passed. And so I promised myself that once I got to any level of prominence within my career, that I would use my platform to ensure that we lose far less women to this disease, far less of our moms, our sisters, our cousins, our aunties, to a disease that is can be preventable based on, you know, diet, fitness regimen, a lot of different things that the research has shown over the years. And so the funds that we raise on an, uh, on an annual basis all go toward putting students through college and, and medical school who are particularly focused on eradicating this disease in black communities across the country. And so it's something, again, that I'm, 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 I'm thankful to be able to turn the tragedy of, of, of losing my mom and godmom and my family and use and leverage our story in a way that can help other people not face that same fate. Yeah, no, I've been, I think every, I think I've been every time, haven't yeah. I? I've been, I've been to most of them, uh -huh. but I, you know, I think, like I've told you many times, I'm, I'm extremely proud of you for that event. You put your heart and soul into it. It's very obvious. And, you know, every time I leave it, I just feel very proud of you. And I've told you many times, so, you know, to me, it's, it's my, my most, you know, you could spin all the freaking, you know, television shows, et cetera, and that's great. And I'm happy for you, but I'm the most part of you for that. I really, I, know, I really mean that. You know that. So. And I, you know, no, I certainly do. I know it's sincere and I appreciate it because it's not enough to be the DJ that's on, like you said, that's popping bottles and, you know, hopping plane to plane, but like, what can we do with, with our purpose and mission to help others? And so, you know, it bridges the medical community that has the access to the information we need to the community of black women that oftentimes there's, there's a gap. And that gap tends to be that there's a large distrust in our community toward medical professionals from every, everything back to the Tuskegee experiment in which our people were, you know, targeted and experimented with so oftentimes black women don't participate in clinical trials. And so I kind of serve as that intermediary to bridge these two communities so there can be a level of trust. And so that the, the research that will uh, ensure that we, that ensure that black women aren't, uh, don't succumb to disease can actually reach the community. So I appreciate that, that acknowledgement. We, we, we love being of service and, you know, we do everything from uh, full makeovers to survivors and, and, and host different drives in which we're raising funds. Like it's just a really, robust experience and we use music as a tool to draw people into the experience. You know, and the event itself, which I've been many times, is a just a very special, you know, in the room. In the room is very special obviously. So and I and I'm very proud of you again. Thank you. Um, okay, so the reason that we're really doing this talk uh, is because you posted a video about the PPP loan uh, mm -hmm. about a week ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, hey I have a question, like well, why don't we do it on your IG Live? Yep. So um, why don't you just kind of delve into that and kind of, you know, let's, I, I will take some questions too if people have it. Why don't you delve into that? So. No, absolutely. The uh, Paycheck Protection Program is what PPP is an acronym for. The Paycheck Protection Program was started by this SBA, which is Small Business Association, another acronym, uh, in response to the coronavirus. You know, as you can imagine, coronavirus, it ravages businesses across the country because it allows it. It puts us in a state of being inoperable. We aren't able to run at full capacity because we have to be mindful of the health risk of so many people gathering. And so uh, this program was kicked off in March and the, the intention was to provide uh, two and a half months of income for uh, small businesses. And what happened at the beginning of the, of the program is that so many bigger, smaller businesses, meaning that smaller businesses with upwards of 500 uh, employees applied for the program and it went through the first bucket of funds, like in three weeks, you know? And so from there, most people believe that, okay, uh, it didn't happen or I applied and I didn't get it and it's over. But a few weeks later, they opened it up for a second round of funds that to this date, those funds have not been expended. So the Paycheck Protection Program is intended to provide income to you as a small business owner, 
uh, and employees. And the first misconception is like, well, I don't have employees or like, am I a small business owner? If you're a sole proprietor, if you receive 1099 income, if you're a gig worker, if you uh, are, uh, if you if, if you are a, a DJ, you drive Uber, Lyft, you have a candle business, t-shirt business, any business that you have that was in place in 2019, and you can show by your 2019 taxes that you were earning income, you're able then to use that as a means to give, to receive a forgivable loan. And so that's what the Paycheck Protection Program is all about, providing funds to help you keep your business afloat. And then like, you know, what are some things like, you know, I think it's specifically for people in our, let's say our uh, field of work, what are some things that, you know, you can spend the money on? Like, you know, can you pay your rent? Can you pay your phone bill with these things? You know, that kind of thing. So, sure, no, that's a great question. The program is intended to pay yourself as well as pay business lease, business mortgage, business utilities. You know what I mean? So many of the people who may be joining, like, you know, my, you have a home office. And so there's a section of your, of your, of your space, of your rent that you bifurcate between this is the office side of the house and this is the uh, home side of the house. You can use that to pay your to pay your business side of the house. If that makes sense. So, like in theory, let's say hypothetically your rent, you know, and not in any world we know, but is a thousand dollars. You can pay maybe five hundred of it because half of your apartment is your office, and the other half is where you live. So you'd be something like that. I'm just saying in theory. Or, or explain it. What do you think? No, that's don't. No, that's exactly what it is. And so okay. a little bit more about the program. The program uh, has an annualized cap at one hundred thousand dollars. I'll explain the form a little bit. So. Say, for instance, you make 100000 bucks. the way for, for last year. And I use that because that's the maximum amount you can use for this formula. If you, own, if you own a small business and you solely, it's just you, you don't have any employees, you take that $100,000 for 2019 that you may have made, you divide it by 12 months, and then you multiply by 2.5. That then becomes the number that you can request. And I know it's a lot of numbers, you know what I mean? But I, wait, wait. It makes sense. So you, 100000 divided by 12, right? Yep, 12 what months. Is, what is that? How much is that? 12 like About mm, 8, 10, something like that. <laughs> and then I'll, you double that. I'm going to add, my calculator right now. I'll do it. No, I'm saying, but then you add, you double it and add five. You know, I get it. Right. So I'm, I'm actually going to make, so just for the accuracy. So that $100,000 divided by 12 is 8,333 bucks. You multiply it by 2.5. The total is $20,833. That is the maximum amount as a small business owner for yourself that you're able to acquire out of the program. And so I maxed out on the program. I took the full amount. And so the way this loan is also forgiven is simply by ensuring that you have proper documentation that I used it to pay myself. I used it to pay my business lease or my business mortgage. And I used it to pay my business utilities. There's a 1% interest rate on this loan, but when the loan is used entirely the way it's supposed to, the 100% of the loan is forgiven. And the scale that that, that kind of rolls on says, hey, as long as 60% of the loan is used to pay you as the, as your owner, as the owner employee, and the other 40% is used for the business utilities, business lease, then the entire 100% of the loan is forgiven. Or you may say, hey, 80% of this loan needs to be used to pay me. The 20% is used toward these utilities and the rent the same thing, the 100% of loan is forgiving. And I, thought, I felt that it was important to put this video together because I was having a lot of sidebars, one-on-one -on -one conversations with some of my counterparts. And I realized that this process was really intimidating because it was paperwork. You know, uh, as artists, we're focused on how things feel. You know, we're not looking to be in the back end office doing a lot of paperwork. And some of us were behind on, on this tax year and as well as previous tax years. And so I waited until after July 15th because that was the date that the 2019 taxes needed to be filed. So at that point, most of us didn't necessarily have an excuse because we had already filed our taxes. And so my thing is that um, typically when there's any type of economic downturn, communities of, color, communities of color, particularly black communities, tend to fall further behind, whereas other communities who have this base of knowledge tend to use this downturn as a means to get ahead. And I was an economics major in college, and so we literally had to take economic history. And you see this time and time over and over again from the Industrial Revolution to, you know, even in 28, um, 2008 when you saw everything for the housing market crash. There's always a class of people who choose to get ahead, and most time those people are the individuals who have access to this type of knowledge. And so there was so much resistance when I was talking to my buddies one-on-one. -on -one. I said, you know what? Let me break it down as simple as possible and put this video out there for those who don't know they're eligible 
and those who may be a little intimidated by it, let, let's just break it down as simple as possible. Um, but that, yeah, I, I, I never thought about that, 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 you know, the lack of access and things is also, you know, affected. Um, okay, so, and then is, how is the app, actual application? Is it a, a lengthy process, kind of like, you know, maybe give us a little highlight of that or walk us through that a bit? No, it's not necessarily a lengthy process. It's just a matter of having the documentation that supports your application. And that documentation is your, is your 2019 taxes. They'll ask you for copies of your January, February, and March 2020 bank statements. And that's just to ensure that, hey, you weren't just in business in 2019, you actually were in business in 2020 prior to the pandemic. Uh, government issued ID, and uh, I think I mentioned taxes already. It's, it's actually fairly simple, this information. Uh, again, it just requires you to be organized. And so what I, what I recommend, if it, if it feels like it's a daunting process, Talk to your person who does your taxes. Talk to your CPA. Talk to the person that you work with on an annual basis because they have a, a wealth of knowledge as it relates to this program, and it can make a tremendous difference. I mentioned uh, the $20,000 you can receive as someone who solely works for him or herself. If you are someone who has W-2 employees, meaning that you have on your payroll, your W-2 employees are eligible for upwards of $46,000 in this program. And, so that's, and that's to cover 24 weeks of payment, six months of payment. And so for a small business, particularly a small black business, if you were able to inject $46,000 that I have to, that I can use to pay one employee, particularly during this pandemic, and if I have multiple employees, I can get up to upwards of that amount for every employee, that's a game changer. That helps out so much during this, during this pandemic. And I just wanna make sure that as many people are aware of the process. And if it, just, if it takes someone like myself to show up that you, hey, if you trust me to come and dance on the dance floor with the oh, dance on the dance floor with me, you know, if you understand a little bit more about my background prior to me being a DJ, I definitely was in that finance world, definitely was in the marketing world, definitely in the corporate world. And I've just leveraged those skills not only for the success of my career, but I also do so on the back end to ensure that during this pandemic, not only am I doing well, but other people have that same access and opportunity as well. No, it's very um, generous of you to kind of share this wealth of knowledge. Like, I, you know, we, you, you've told me several times, we have talked several times and you've been telling me about this the whole time. Then you post the video and then you want to, you know, you just want to share, which is very generous and the, you know, the, the reciprocation of all that will come to you. But um, what is the, um, and you have to spend it in a certain amount of time, correct? That is correct. You have 24 yeah. weeks, six months to spend the, uh, the income that you receive in the loan, you know? Uh, so, and across that 24 weeks, it's just encouraged that you keep amazing documentation so that on the back end, you can then apply for the loan forgiveness. And they'll, they'll, they'll take copies of your payroll, copies of your bank statements, showing where you paid rent, showing where you paid yourself. Any of that documentation will then facilitate you getting that whole loan replaced. And I mean, so who doesn't like, you know, $20,000 or $46,000 completely free money. That's essentially what it is, but it's all about paperwork and compliance. And again, that tends to be the thing that sometimes can be intimidating. So I just had to break it down as simple as possible. And so all those details are on the video that are that's posted on my page. Uh, yes, exactly. And I kind of posted today, but yeah, go to his page to see the whole uh, video. And then um, when is the last day to apply? Friday, August 8th. And this deadline has been extended three times. Three times. That means there's money still out there. And so a lot of the thing that a lot, most folks get tripped up on is because it's called the Paycheck Protection Program. And most time, if you work for yourself, you're not necessarily giving yourself a paycheck. You're just like, I made some money, I'm spending, you know. But but that is, you still you still are eligible because you're a sole proprietor, your gig work, you get 1099 income. Though all the income that you claim on your taxes then become what you then go and and use for the formula that makes you eligible for this program. So, like I said earlier, if you own a, a t-shirt business or a candle business or a veterinary, no matter what field you're in, but particularly this is super important for my black creators, super important for my small black business owners, super important for creatives, period, you know, just to gain access to these funds because uh, nightlife and, and, and artistry as we know it uh, is going to be rattled for a while. And so that doesn't have to be the reason that we kind of fall on hard times. Um, yes, this is uh, really amazing. And thank you for sharing this. Um, does anybody have any questions? for Brian Henry uh, regarding all of this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you explained it very clearly. I think it's, you know, um, I still haven't applied. I'm, you know. <laughs> <It's> waiting, <no. laughs> I'm waiting. I don't know for what, but, uh, but I know a lot of people that have done it successfully and a lot of people got, the, you know, the money. So I think they are giving it, um, you know, they're giving it 
to, I don't know, what, is there any, like, do you know what, what they're giving it versus what they're not giving it? Like, why people are getting it, why people aren't? Do you know anything like well, that? Well, you get in the program, some of the banks who, who, uh, who were underwriting the loans, they favored yeah. loans for small businesses with a bigger employee base. You know, yeah. and, and most of the small black businesses may have zero to 10 employees, you know, or one, I'm sorry, one to 10 or one to 15 employees. And so when they were applying through their bank, they were getting rejected and they couldn't understand why they thought they just weren't eligible. It's just that some of those bigger institutions wanted uh, bigger, smaller businesses. And so there's a link in my bio that I've listed four different uh, financial institutions that all specialize in ensuring that the smaller businesses of zero, one, two, three employees get access to the same amount of funds. So uh, any, any resources surrounding the topic is, is again, the video on my page, as well as a link in my bio that explains it even more thoroughly than I'm doing today. Um, all right. Well, I think that that covers it all, right? Anything else you want to add to that, or? Nah, get this money, get this guap, get yeah, apply, exactly. for the, apply for the program. You know what I mean? Well, um, I thank you for doing this. Um, you know, I think I've, I've kind of watched you grow over the last ten years. I, I'm very proud of every step you've made along the way. You know, um, I think even this is like you know a telltale sign of where you're at in your life. You just want to share knowledge and things. Um, uh, and, you know, like I said, I'm just very happy and proud of you, and I appreciate you uh, sharing this on my IG. Here's a question, though. You, you saw it? Hey, I see the question. If your business was established in January 2020, you've never filed taxes or made profits, are you still eligible? Unfortunately, you're not eligible uh, for the program. Uh, but there are tons of grants. There are tons of different programs that are going across uh, the web. And so what I would encourage you to do is to search uh, COVID relief grants and begin to kind of begin your search from there. There are artist grants that are nationwide. There are artist grants that are based solely in your respective city or town. And so the only reason you're, el you're not eligible is because your business was not started in 2019. But there's still tons of other resources. So Damon, Damon I, have, I have a question for you. Oh God, first of all, okay, shoot, <laughs> shoot. What, do you, what, do you, what to date has been your, the experience since you've been in this nightlife architect, nightlife curator, position and of course it extends beyond that but what is the thing you know given that you're from Detroit and you've had the opportunity to live in New York and Los Angeles and travel the world what's the thing that you're most thankful for experience or otherwise most thankful for yeah um that I get to live the life I want to live I'm very grateful that I get to this is not specifically what I dreamed about as a kid but this I get to live a dream life that's what I'm very thankful for so I think I can take it for granted I think that you know um I try to be as kind as I can to each person I come in contact with, but I really believe that I get to live this dream life and I'm very grateful for that. And it's honestly, it's, it's, it's not exactly what I wanted as an eight year old, but it's in, in theory, it's exactly what I wanted as an eight year old. So. Well, what would be better than that if it, if it isn't exactly what you want? Um, you know, being very rich, basically. You mean? So, <laughs> uh, but you know, the reality is I have gotten to live this amazing life that, uh, I got to navigate myself on my own terms, mm -hmm. and um, I really created a very specific and unique lane and place for myself in the world and in the creative world and in the world that we live in. So, you know, so, and you know, I always say there's only one me. Everyone knows that there's only one oh, me. Oh, we definitely know there's only one demo. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, but I mean, but I, I mean, I have to echo your sentiments. You know, what I, I sometimes, I don't say take it for granted, but. Uh, because I've been blessed to be in this space now for 10 years, things become, uh, you expect them or you, they're, 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 they're such a normal occurrence, the, the, the opportunities and the people and places and things we see and have access to. Um, but, but I'm so thankful because I have to realize that so many things I'm experiencing, these are things I, I pray for. You know, these are things that, you know, as a kid, or even prior to DJing and, and reading Quincy Jones' autobiography, I'm like, wow, one day I want to, I want to travel across the world and make people dance and, and get paid to do so. And to and so to have the opportunity to do that now is just overwhelmingly a blessing. And even more than a, a more of a blessing right now is to have a break. You know, I think I was running myself ragged D. I was on planes two and three times a week, you know, doing what I had prayed for. But the blessing to be able to be still and turn within and to meditate and align and understand more deeply who I am and connect more deeply to that purpose. When the world opened back up, I'm like, Let's go. Let's go. You know? Well, it's interesting because um, I, you know, you seem like you are much, I, I didn't really think 
uh, I was, mine wasn't strategic. I was just, like I said, I was myself 100% at all times, and I know what I liked, and I kind of, and I still do this to this day. I'm really adamant about the things I like, and as a result, everything just kind of came to place around me in a lot of ways. I wasn't really strategic with it. I, it's not kind of the way I operate or think where I think you are, and it, that works for you, for instance. But, like, mm -hmm. I definitely was just doing kind of blindly a lot of times with my soul and my heart, you know, that, you know, in a great way as a result. So, you know, and being very meticulous and specific about certain things. And that's just, like, an art, I said, my whole life I've been an artist. I'm an artist, you know, since a very young person, I've been an artist, so. Which I think is dope. I mean, I've learned, even I, I learned to unpack and embrace new levels and new spaces and places within my artistry every day. And that's why this time is super important. But you're right, like, I, I've been strategic as hell, you know, but I, 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 I love what you're saying in terms of leaving with your heart, leaving with your gut, because I've learned at this point in my life, uh, my intellect has got me a lot of places, but to move further along this journey, it's gonna have to come from that heart space, and so. I've done things that are not necessarily, I'm sorry, I've done things that are not necessarily the wisest for my career, but it, it, it feels right, and that's, that's where I, I'm always gonna go there. You know, I'm always gonna go there instead of what, something that doesn't feel right that's maybe gonna make me more successful. I'm always gonna be that way, you know? And, so, and then yeah. one, one more thing I wanna say that you just said, and I, don't necessarily agree with this with anyone, not just you. Listen, we all wanted what we got. We all got what we wanted. You want to be a successful DJ? We all got it. So I, I, my pet peeve is when people complain about having to go on the plane again tomorrow and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't play those games. I said, listen, I come from Detroit. You come from Baltimore. I'm Philly, I'm just kidding. Um, so, you know, the reality is there's people that still live those lives. We get to live these lives we want. You better, you know, not you. I'm not saying specifically, but... I don't want to hear nothing about no complaining about getting on a plane again tomorrow. Listen, no, you live in the life exactly you want to live. Trust me. No, you, got, you, got, you, you, got, you asked for it and you got it. You know? No, that's 100% so. real because, you know, complaints are prayers to the devil, you know? And so I, I do my best to catch myself when I'm complaining because I, I am so blessed and so fortunate. I really have nothing to complain about whatsoever. And so, yeah, man. You know, I have to say, I don't, you know, maybe ask people that are around me often, but I don't think I complain a lot. I don't, I really don't have anything to complain about, you know, like, you know, in general, I'm saying over the last like 10 years, you know, right now, yes, there's a lot of things, weird things going on. But like, in general, I don't have a lot to complain about uh, in my career. I don't think I complain a lot, you know, mm -hmm. as in, yeah, I don't think so. I, I, I hope I don't, so I don't think I do, so you mean? I mean, I think that's great. You know, it means you already vibing high, and so that's why you have access to some amazing people that I've seen across this feed over the last few weeks. I think I am your 69th interview, <laughs> how, how apropos. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a cancer, so that, that yin and yang, that six and nine was, was perfect. Oh, yeah. Happy belated birthday, by the way. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. One of the, one of the most chill birthdays, you know, it, and it was- Everybody, was, not just you. Hello. I'm like, so. I was making fun of my people back in April. I was like, man, shit, it sucks to be you. And then here we are in July. I'm like, oh, this is what it feels <laughs> like. So, but it, it was great, though. It was all love. I've been known to fly across the venue and, you know, do backflips and things on my birthdays. And this year I, you know, had a very chill one to say the least myself. So, but listen, we're all meant to learn during this time, as you know, you know, um, everyone keeps asking me too, uh, kind of what have I am learning? And I said, I'm not necessarily, I don't know if I'm learning so much. Um, I'm kind of getting reacquainted with myself in this interesting way because we do live, we live these kind of very fast paced lives mm -hmm. that, um, you know, or at least for me, I do, 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 do. And I like it that way. It doesn't bother me at all. You know, do, 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 do. You know, I've been, I looked at my January and February, I was looking for a photo. I looked at my January and February photos. And I was like, wait, I was there. And then I was in there. And then it, like, it was like, I was, I can't even believe when you look at it, like how much I did. Know. I had a good January, and February. I had a full year in those you, two months. So. Listen, you and you and I both, I was in, in January, I was in Ghana, in Egypt. Yeah. Abu Dhabi, Sundance Film Festival. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. And, and, and something else that I'm forgetting. I'm just like, damn, that was just January, you know? So, yeah. so I, I completely agree with you. And I mean, to, so, to yeah. that point, since we live these fast-paced lifestyles, it's very, uh, it's easy to get addicted to doing. And that's why I'm thankful for this time because I've, I've, I've learned to live in the just being. You know, I think at the beginning of the pandemic, it was a, it was a productivity contest. Like, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. No, like, I just have to learn how to be because from my place of being, everything that's meant to be will happen. But if I'm always doing, I will lose like connection to, to know what's the right thing to do. You know what I mean? No, I absolutely agree with you. And I will say for myself included, or myself as well, like I am a doer, I've been a doer my whole life. I'm, I'm a doer. I like to do stuff in general. Like I don't, you know, I just always been that way. And I really thought maybe like let's say in March or April, 
it was going to affect me not doing stuff. And mm -hmm. the reality is it did not. I was, I was very surprised. You know, I've done a party in a year. I probably do. I don't know how many you do. I probably do approximately 300 parties a year, you know? So like to not be doing a party for more than, you know, decades, plural, you know? So like mm -hmm. I, um, to not be doing that, I thought was really going to affect me. And it, I, to be honest, I don't think it really has. And one more thing too, I think, We've all had this time to, as artists, we've all had this time to reconnect with ourselves and like, you know, replenish our art. So, you know, I said this, the most amazing art is about to hit this world in about a year or two, trust me. Albums, yeah. albums are everything. So, I mean, we know that's right, so. No, I'm, and I'm looking forward to it. I think, I think so many creators like myself and, and different artists will come out with some of their best work after this time. So, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna keep on giving that, creating those experiences in nightlife and across so many other sectors that Keep well, that's how this, this, that's how this talk came about. You know, everyone was kind of doing it. And um, I thought I wanted to do something, you know, and something that celebrated culture in a way that, you know, I like to celebrate culture. So, you know, this, this got birth because of this. And, and uh, a friend of mine said a great thing about this is that I'm doing what I always do. I'm connecting with people like I always do, you know. So it's just like me in a, in a different form, but facing the same thing. So, you know. Yep, expand, expanding that horizons, man. Expanding your, your access to people. So I appreciate you creating the platform. I appreciate you welcoming me today. And shout out Thank to the you. folks who've been in, in the comments and the chat and in, here in the room. I appreciate you all tuning in. Um, I appreciate you doing this. I'm very proud of you, like I said. And um, there will be lots of reciprocation even for this alone, just for you sharing all this information for you. And you know that. So it's, it's all love. It's all love. All right. You have a great evening. Thank you. Do the same, Mo. Take care. I'll be safe. Bye. Thank you.